Hey guys, it's Chris with the Gorilla Gunfighter, and today I'm going to show you what I do for a job. Uh, I'm a land surveyor, and so there's not going to be no explosions, no guns, no knives, no killing stuff. So if uh, that's what you're looking for, uh, you might want to go check somewhere else. But if you want to learn how to set up a GPS base as a land surveyor, have I got a deal for you. So let's check it out. All right, go briefly over the equipment. Um, GPS head, that's the base head. Uh, GPS base extension, the rover head. We have a radio and our whip antenna, and the tri brack, which I'll show you here in just a second. Measuring sticks, battery to power the base and the radio. All my antenna and radio whips are in here, and our power cables and additional antenna. We have our legs and a tri brack. The legs are centered over this, which is a control point pin. This just happens to be control point 23. This pin was previously set up a couple months ago, and it is used to triangulate the this exact position to a thousandth of a centimeter, um, so you can get accurate GPS triangulations. This thing is a tri brack and it's screwed on here this is what holds the base head and you use this bubble level which right now isn't very level and you look through this optical plummet I don't know if you'll be able to see very clearly there's the pin it's not very clear through that uh, but this you get your looking at this pin through that optical plummet and you want to get it exactly in the center which is that little indentation right there and uh, you level it up keep leveling the legs and get this level and once everything's leveled up then you start putting your equipment on there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so let's uh, get you guys set up here hopefully uh, sound and everything will be good uh, and there will be some background noise of course I am outside and I'm off a of main road in the middle of nowhere uh, so, uh, let's get you guys set up on this tripod. Alright, and there's my ugly mug, and there's the legs, so we're going to go ahead and get the base set up. So try to get it centered over there, make small adjustments. Once you're close, you step on the legs. And get them in there. Of course, this is you know throwing my optical off, so I have to readjust using the legs. Look at this bubble. And start leveling it out. Move these things a little bit. And that one. And this leg right here. This one right here. And that should get us pretty damn close. Now I'm going to loosen the optic or the plummet and center it on the indentation on that pin. So it's just that little bit, and now I am perfectly centered on that. And now I'm going to use these adjustment dials to really dial it in my bubble is completely centered and it is and that's that now I start to go off camera get our base extension up that goes on our tri brack tri back top comes off you screw that in, that deal in Why you double check? Because as you're moving this thing around, it'll come off center. So you want to keep double checking as you're messing with it. And then get one of our cables. 
this is that Y splitter cable that, that goes from the base to the radio to the battery. And this side goes underneath your base head to provide power. Now power is provided by that car battery. They can put other smaller batteries in this thing, uh, but it's not as effective as a car battery. So uh, that's what we use. Then grab the radio. And this is your radio. It's a Trimble Trimark radio. Uh, no big deal. And this sits nice and right here. Do it gently to try not to knock the signal off. Get a cable in. That's that. Again, I'm going to check and recheck my zero or my uh, sorry my uh, pin to make sure it's still centered. here drop this car battery up here this is my radio cable it's gonna go from a radio to my antenna that I'm about to put up so let's go ahead and attach the radio cable from here Check. Yep, still on there, still good to go, so it should be good for the rest of the time. Grab my rover out. Close this box up. This way. Now, grab the holes. This is an extra long whip antenna. It's pretty long so we can reach a decent ways as long as you're on a general elevated position. Uh, you want to try to get on a hill somewhere overlooking where you're going to be doing your work or where you're going to be surveying at. That way you do, can maintain radio line of sight. Uh, otherwise it, it, it bounces all around and your calculations are going to be off. So try to maintain radio line of sight if you can. And candy canes or extensions to get the radio way up there and these just, just screw in here I mean you want to try to be gentle with the equipment I mean it is you're really really expensive but um, you really still just need to put it together so and it didn't fall on directions these damn poles sometimes the threading's off um, so you had to label them and I had to, I just didn't listen to my own instructions. So if I can get this thing thrown in, here we go. And this is going to be what our green antenna is going to be attached to. So we're going to put this on here. And it'll put it, I don't know. 15 feet in the air, which will give us, considering where we're working, will give us a pretty considerable range on this radio, at least a couple miles, but right now I'm looking at where we're going to be working at, and it's not even half a mile away, so uh, that'll be good. Now, on your whip, you have this little guy right here, that's where you're going to attach your cable to, or well, the other end of your cable, rather that is this guy right here that I just tangled all the hell. So, put this on here and get it good and tight. Come on. All right. Now I might be out of frame for a minute. Try to get this radio up here. So that's up. We attach our leads to the 
car battery. And our radio is powered on. Double check. We're on a pin. That's good. Bubble level is still good. Power's on. And what you want to look for is on your radio. If you guys can see that, my vest is sort of throwing the color off. But it says uh, device status battery normal. Might be a little bit easy to see. Here we go. And you cycle through. That's going to be your frequency station. That's just data protocol, radio link rate for information. You're in a base rover mode. The radios are the uh, receiving sensitivity is low, which I'm not worried about. And transmit power is all the way up. That's what we need. Uh, now we're going to set it, get our rover on. It'll take me just a second, so you guys bear with me. You'll get the batteries for the rover. And I'm back in just a second. around the viewfinder so I can see what's going on. Um, this is your rover head. This is where all your information is going to be transmitted from. And just screw in the whip antenna on your rover. A lot of antennas, a lot of screwing stuff in, a lot of whips and cords and cables and everything else. Uh, and it just takes these little pack batteries, little lithium ion batteries drops in right there. Okay. Drops in that and that goes back right there. So make sure it's on there and make sure it's working. And it is. Lights are coming on. So let that sit there for the time being. Now one thing we gotta do is we gotta measure the height. Those measuring sticks, they just, it's like a tent pole, it just it expands and it has measurements all along either side of it. Hopefully, you guys can see those. Um, and you just drop it right in the center of that pin and you measure it to the center of your base head. It's called the center of bumper. So, right now, I am at 5.2 feet, or 5.2 survey feet. Uh, all survey measurements and engineering measurements are in tenths, so there's no three quarters of an inch, any of that stuff, it's all in tenths. Tenths and hundreds of, you know, a foot. <coughs> so, Sticks are done with. This, way. this goes back to the truck. And now comes sort of the not really complicated part, but the more in depth part is your data collector. It's the big hand deal. I'm sure you guys have seen, uh, seen people use these before. Uh, yeah, the dudes walk around with the on the side of the road doing land survey stuff usually on streets. Uh, 
I really don't do local stuff. It's all cross country, things like that. Right now, the project we're on is a 187 mile line from uh, Wheeler, Texas to Ringgold, Oklahoma. It's, hey, it's about 187, around 190 miles. Uh, so it's a long ways and uh, good paying job. But some days it's kind of boring, other days it's real hectic. Because uh, everyone needs, you know, everyone needs your, your measurements, and it has to be exact. You're dealing with high pressure pipe stuff that's traveling. You know, products usually be gasoline or natural gas. It's traveling through these pipes at around 3,000, you know, psi. So you need to know where your welds are. You need to know what your distance is from your top of the ground to where your pipe is. So that's your ground cover. Uh, you're allotted so much ground cover. You have to know welds are in relation to your next weld and the weld in front and the weld back so if they have to dig it out they can pull up your old information find exactly to the you know tenth of a, of a foot or a hundredth of a foot uh, where exactly that, that that bad weld or whatever is so we have to start a new job on our collector i'm not going to uh, go through the different screens because it's already going to be hard enough for you guys to see this but you hope this is a triple axis program for you guys that are like using uh, you survey pro before tremble access is a little bit easier um, learning it's tougher but it's it's a little more user friendly once you get used to it uh, just start a new job and each job on a pipeline has a different name this one is 1421001 and then we use the day's date which is 32414 That's another cool thing about this job course, you're outside all the time, which is awesome, but you see a lot of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise see if you were in town. Uh, deer all over the place, here you've got skunks everywhere, I don't know what it is about this place and skunks, but they're all over the place. Uh, that stink is bad as you, know, you would think if you never smelled one, of course, me being from Georgia, I never had a mess with skunk. Uh, it smells like, a, almost like, a, like burning rubber, just a real sour kind of smell. Uh, real bad B.O. So, uh, anyway, we start measure, RTK, uh, I'm not going to even try to explain what RTK is. You start your base receiver. That's the base receiver right there that we set up and measure. And this, my collector, is like the Bluetooth to my base receiver. You're waiting for it to do that. It takes it a minute or two. And your point name, this point is CP23. It's already in here, so I just type in 23, it automatically goes to that. Antenna height 5.20 and to the center bumper and start. Simple as that. Base started, that's what I need now. I'm going to set up a Bluetooth for overhead. Do that, almost the same thing. I'm going to go to measure, RTK measure points. And now it's Bluetooth on to a rover head. So let's see here. I'm going to set my rover head up real quick. And this is just a two meter rover pole. Uh, it's got a bubble level on it. You guys can see it right there. Uh, and it extends out. I'm just going to extend it a little bit just so I can screw this thing on here. Correctly, you have access to your satellites, and this is your radio. You're getting radio signal, so that's what you want. Put all three of those lights on, and the middle one blinking, and uh, satellite blinking as well. So right now, I have 16 satellites in view. That's what's using the brightest coordinates off of. Now I'm just going to adjust my antenna height, which is this, to two meters. Two, the bottom 
of the antenna mount, which is right here. And that is essentially it. I am going to turn off my auto store, which that means if I hit enter on this thing and it takes a GPS you know, coordinate or GPS location of that shot, it automatically stores it. Well, I don't want it to do that. I want to be able to hit store and it asks me for attributes. So if I'm taking a shot on a weld and I hit store, it brings up an attribute list. It says, you know, I can name it a weld and I can call it a uh, automatic weld or a robotic weld or a manual weld or, you know, handmade, you know, human weld. But there's a bunch of different attributes, there's hundreds of them, and each company you work for or each job you do will usually have different attribute lists. They vary slightly, uh, but for the basic stuff, uh, roads, uh, power lines, that sort of stuff, it's, uh, it's going to be the same across the board. So, guys, that is it in a nutshell, what I do for my day-to-day -day job. I enjoy it. It pays really well, which definitely helps in the enjoyment factor. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't plan on doing this the rest of my life. I really, you know, would like to get a couple years in, save up a bunch of money, and then do something else. So, uh, anyway, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'll try to answer them. And, uh, you know, any video suggestions of stuff you guys want to see, especially any of you survey guys. Since I'm doing that most of the day, it's a lot easier for me to do survey videos right now. Uh, I'll try to get, knock out a knife video, so stay tuned for that. And uh, you know, appreciate the, the support, you guys. Have a good one.